Hi, welcome to the 2021 StarCraft Superlight 241BH. Today we're going to give you a quick video tour of this new unit. We're going to start on the outside. Let's start right here with the unit hot water heater. So the outside access to this unit, there's three things that are important to note. First, being the pressure relief valve. Uh, second would be the drain plug. So going back to the pressure relief valve, if you're ever taking this drain plug out, you want to make sure that you relieve the pressure by opening the valve like this. Otherwise that thing shoots out like a bullet. And the other thing to note is the reset that is located here on the outside of the hot water tank. We'll continue along the outside. Next we'll come to their stabilization jacks. It's important to remember that you level the trailer as best as you can pre before you use the stabilization jacks as they're not meant to level the trailer. They're located at all four corners. Next we'll take a look at the front storage compartment. Here we'll see the neat little thing they finally added, which is this quick connect nut driver that you can use with your drill to lower the, dra the jacks and you don't have to uh, use the manual jack. However, the manual jack is still there if you choose to use it. Also in here, you'll see the spray hose. This can be connected to spray ports around the outside of the trailer. We'll show you those as we come to them. And your 30 amp power cord. This is what you would plug into your trailer parks power outlet. Here we have a solar ready charging port. You hook up your solar panels. We'll move along to the front of the trailer. And the first thing I want to note at the front is the storage compartment for your battery. This is a new unit, so we don't have a battery on it at, at this time, but it would sit right here in a battery box and be connected to the, uh, the leads for your, your uh, low voltage system. Right in front of that comes to your propane system with the regulators and the 30 pound bottles. This system uses a crossover regulator. And the basics of what that means is this handle at the front is pointing to this tank. It will draw from that tank until the pressure drops or until there's less propane in it. Enough to the point that it will automatically draw from this pent tank without you having to manually switch over to tell it to draw from this tank. Pretty handy on a cold night. You don't have to run outside and switch the bottles over. So this is an electric tongue jack. So in that front storage compartment, there is also a manual jack uh, that can be used if you don't have power for the electric jack. Uh, use it by removing this, this rubber port here. And this electric jack is a nice light on the front to help you uh, with loading or connecting, as well as it electronically raises and lowers the trailer. I'd like to also point out this important safety feature, which is the uh, breakaway switch. In the event that your tow vehicle becomes disconnected from the trailer, it will pull this pin and engage the trailer brakes. Uh, also to, to think about, sometimes when you're connecting and disconnecting, this pin can get partially pulled out. So it can be... Uh, it can engage the it can engage the brakes without you really knowing or without them meaning to be engaged. So it's somewhere you can check. Continue along the outside here. We'll come to the other side of the uh, front storage compartment. Uh, I won't open that as we already looked through the other side, and it's the same. Uh, we see this switch here. 
Let's pour the lights on the front. Continue along, we'll come to the outside access or venting for your refrigerator. Now it's important at all times that this, this uh, remains free of any obstacles or obstructions as airflow is needed for proper functioning of the refrigerator. Continue along. Next we'll come to your docking station. This, uh, this uh, has a neat little kickstand to hold, hold the door open. Neat little feature. So these docking stations, basically, you have a valve here and it will switch you between filling your fresh water tank from this port to uh, a city water connection with this port. Uh, with it in this position, it will fill your fresh water tank in this position, straight down. You would hook this up to the uh, trailer park's water supply, or basically their, their garden hose. We also have uh, taps for your outdoor shower. This is a spot where you could uh, hook up the, the hose or the spray hose that I showed you earlier. This uh, inlet is for a tank flush, so you hook your, your water supply up to here and you can flush out your uh, black water tank. Uh, right beside that, we have your input for the satellite or cable for the trailer. And right below this, we come to the output for your black and gray water tanks. As you will see, we have the handles for the valves that operate the black and gray water tanks here and here. Lastly, on this side of the trailer, we come to your 30 amp power supply. This is where you'd hook the cable that's in the front storage compartment up and then hook it to these campgrounds power supply. Continue along the back, you see that there is a ladder for safe roof access. And as we come around further, you will also note that we have a propane port or a gas port that is complete with a, a valve here. Uh, this would be the closed position. This would be the open position, so propane would be available at this point. Uh, and this could be used for an outdoor barbecue or anything of that nature. So standing up, we'll uh, take a look at your outdoor kitchen. This has a locking mechanism to lock the stove in place as well as a shut off for the gas. This lights like, this lights like most regular camp stove. Put it to the light position and then light with your uh, barbecue lighter. another spray port that can be used to utilize the spray hose that was in the front storage compartment. Uh, you want to be careful here not to get any overspill of water as some of this wood would be susceptible to damage. So go ahead and use it. Just, just be cautious. Be aware that you don't want to get too much water on anything down here. Next, we come to the outdoor fridge. Don't have to wake the kids up going into the trailer to get a to get a beverage. And then one of the last things we want to note, or last couple things we want to note on the outside here, is one because it's under the awning. I want to make a special note of the exhaust for the furnace. It gets really hot, so if you have kids or anybody under the awning, just make sure they're aware that it can get pretty hot. Next, I want to point out that on the heads at the top of each side of the awning, we have speakers so you can enjoy the uh, music from your stereo inside the trailer 
outside of the awning. Let's uh, head inside and take a look. As soon as we come through the door, we'll see there's a fire extinguisher. As well as a large closet. Your uh, indication, indication panel, show you your battery, fresh, black, and gray water tank levels, as well as switches for your uh, gas and electric water heater and your uh, water pump itself. We also have the control to extend or retract the awning. There it goes, come back. We also have the main switch for the trailer lighting and the switch for your LED lights under your awning. Now we'll turn around and immediately we can see the, the bunks. Large storage area. We'll also notice that in the bunks we have USB connectivity. Good for play. Good for uh, charging most devices nowadays as they all seem to come with USB and no charging block. And there's some in the lower bunk, bunk as well. From here, we'll look up, way up, and see the smoke detector. Now, your smoke detector is battery operated, so it's important that you uh, change the battery uh, on a regu regular scheduled basis. Uh, I would suggest, or the, the what they usually suggest is uh, daylight savings time every six months. Easiest way to remember. Uh, there's a way to test. There's a button in the center. If you press and hold for about three seconds, it should beep and let you know that it is still working. Check out your bathroom here. Nice, lots of storage. Fan, skylight. Switch control for your fan. Your lights. Uh, important to note in the bathroom here is your GFCI plug. Uh, if you're noticing, uh, especially on the outside plug or any of the counter plugs, that you uh, don't have power, it could be it could be that this has been tripped. So come and take a look. If that light's on, then you want to press the top black button to reset it and make sure the light goes off. And then you can go out and see if you have power at the uh, plugs where where there wasn't any previously. All right. Continue out, go to our left here, see that we have your propane carbon monoxide detector. There's a button on the front you can press to make sure it's still functioning. It's important that you do it every once in a while. Uh, I usually suggest you do it when you test your uh, smoke detector. Easier to remember that way. So next up, we come to your TV. And these newer units, they seem to be adding uh, the radio as well. Um, so all your radio controls are on here. You're still able to play, uh, play music uh, inside the trailer uh, and outside through the uh, speakers on the awning. However, everything is done through the TV. So all the options are available through the TV remote. Uh, you select you basically select the uh, the radio through the source options. One of them will be will be the radio. Moving along here, we'll come to your range and stove. Range and stove is pretty simple. Opens up like that. Like these nice kind of grill tops they're using now. Turn this to the light position or the little flame, you'll see it lights up red. And then turn the igniter and we have fire. Do it again. And we have no fire. That's because I turned the propane off and it's just burning up what's in the line. Now, here we have your oven. 
it lights in much the same way. You turn this so that it's on the flame section. You'll see the red light light up on here. That's a new feature. And you turn the igniter. The only difference is when you turn the igniter, you also have to press and hold this knob in until it lights. It can take a few tries, uh, especially if there's not a good pressure of gas build up in the lines. Sometimes it can take a little bit to uh, get it to light. If it doesn't light the first time, give it a few seconds, give it a minute, come back, try again. What you don't want is to keep trying to light it over and over again and allow more and more propane into the trailer. So if you tried to light it a few quite a few times and it's not and you know it's not lighting, then give it a give it five minutes, make sure the bottles are turned on and then come back to it. Just let the gas disperse a bit. Next we'll come to your load center. We have breakers like you'd see in your house. They function the exact same way. And we have fuses that uh, look probably similar to the ones you might have in your car and function much of the same way. This would be for your low voltage side. Under here I'll show you, I've already uh, kind of opened this up. This panel uh, is normally not like that obviously, it's pushed over to the side so you have storage under here. I pre-opened uh, pre it up so we could take a look in here. We have the back of your hot water tank and of note here are these valves at the top and bottom. Uh, they are for diverting the water either to the hot water tank or not to the tank, uh, basically uh, bypassing it. Uh, why would you do that? Use that when you're uh, winterizing it uh, so you're not filling a hot water tank full of antifreeze because it doesn't need to be. There's a drain on it, you can drain the water out. So you bypass the hot water tank and save some money on some antifreeze. Also in here, we have the uh, fill hose for your water pump. So that's where you would uh, use to uh, winterize or use the antifreeze in the trailer. Moving on to the thermostat, it has a capacitive touch button. That means that you cycle through, you don't really have to touch, you just light tap. There's not a mechanical button to press, so to speak. So you can cycle through your hot, cold, your air conditioner, your heat, and the fan, and you can use these to cycle a high or low uh, fan speed, basically. Come to your uh, fridge here. Turn it on. You have a propane mode. You have a auto mode, which will automatically choose electric if it's available and you have just electric mode. Now if any one of these modes are not functioning for any reason, no electricity, no propane, you will get a, a flashing light here that will indicate that things are not working properly. Lastly we come into the bedroom here. One well, first thing I want you to notice is it's ready for hookup for TV. It's got a mounting location already marked, spot for cable or satellite, and power ready for you. There's some nice uh, lighting over top of the bed. And we also have access to your front storage compartment from the bed. Important to note here is your emergency exit. To use the emergency exit, you press down on the black tab, push the red handle over, pull the handle out straight, and then push it all the way outside of the trailer. Then you may pull this red tab and escape to safety. The last thing you're going to do is show you the same thing, emergency exit in the kids bunk area. Important to know that there is one on both ends. So if for some reason they, you know, God forbid you can't get there, they have an exit for them as well. 
Well, that about sums up our brief tour of the trailer. Obviously, there's much more uh, to to this unit than uh, we went over in a brief amount of time. But if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at Christie's, and we'd be happy to help you. Thank you.